Hello, everyone. Good to see everyone on this beautiful day and all the smiling faces. Thank you for coming. I have a, put a sheet of paper on everyone's table. We're having a board meeting following the club meeting at one o'clock. And I've shared with you the board's three goals for the 2021-22 year. And if you have any ideas, input, mostly on how you'd like to be involved with those three goals, that would be greatly appreciated. And we'll gather all the ideas and how you'd like to give input and support the goals to the board. And we'll try to incorporate every good idea and definitely every person here. I know all of you are a member of Rotary because you desire to make a difference. You want to get involved and you know as a group you can make a larger difference than individually. So that's what we're all about and I just want to tell everyone that you're graciously invited to stay for the board meeting if you'd like to listen and uh, just be a part of it because we're all here for the same reason, right? And the board will be the best if we have all of your great ideas and support. So thank you so very, very much. We have an excellent agenda lined out for today, and uh, we're going to start off with prayer. And if Mr. Bill LeBlanc will come up. For those of you who have been members of this club for a good long while, I just want you to know, I just saw Jean Brown. And um, sad. But she knew me. I had a nice conversation with her, and I saw her. And I also want to lift up to you just a page out of Shane will understand this. Uh, I got a call from Brown's uh, Tuesday, and I did the funeral for a five year old little boy yesterday afternoon who drowned in the bathtub. And so just to ask you to, it's a family I never met before, an African American family that I obviously had never met, but uh, uh, those kind of things worry work on my head. So lift them up and um, say a kind word for me too, if you would. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. We give you thanks for the fact we had rain earlier this week, quite a bit of it for some of us. And the, and the ground is green and the, the land is green. It does not look like nearing the middle of August. And for that, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for this club and its work in our community. Um, we ask your spirit to be upon us and, and those things that we do uh, to be upon us this day as we meet and upon the food, uh, take it to the nourishment of our bodies and keep us in your peace. In the name of the Christ. Amen. Let's see. Next, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Dr. Parr, please. Please place the flag with your hand on your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll be led in a wonderful song that we should all know, Rotary. <laughs> Louder now. Oh, 
Next, we'll have introduction of guests with our secretary, Tracy Love. Thank you, Tracy. Now we're going to highlight a Rotary member. And today we're highlighting the Director of Youth Service, Val Bosak. I'm a proud member of Rotary. And my introduction to Rotary was uh, in Pennsylvania when my dad was a member for many, many years from the time I was very young. And we would attend different events. Um, and um, it was just a regular um, occurrence in our household. We had uh, many exchange students as well that would come and live with my family for a while. Uh, some of my sisters had the opportunity to go over to Europe and, and uh, spend some time there as well. Um, when I moved to Texas in 2012, and a couple of years later, I, I got my what I consider my dream job at Freedom Furniture and Design. I decided to settle in a little bit and you know think about what's next. You know, the the owner of the company is very. Uh, encouraging for personal and professional development. And uh, what I wanted was to become a member of Rotary. And she agreed and, uh, you know, uh, has been very supportive for the last couple of years. Um, the way that I found this Rotary Club, uh, we are located in Irving. And uh, I also moved to Irving, but I looked online because I knew I wanted to become a member of Rotary in Irving. I wanted it to be convenient. And uh, definitely the um, um, you know, internet availability of that information. Uh, I really had to make quite a few emails and phone calls in order to get connected with this club. So the work that is being done you know, to get that word out there is, is really important. Um, the, um, I just uh, really enjoy being a member here and uh, plan to continue being a member of Rotary uh, and look forward to working with all of you on uh, different projects. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I see Tracy's going around with the uh, Bucket. However, I would like to remind everyone that today your contribution will be uh, given to Irving Cares and Crisis Ministries. I, um, several board members helped me to realize that we have uh, a couple of members that are very involved in the Crisis Ministry. So we're going to contribute to both today. Your food that you've brought in, we will. Uh, let John pick up since he's here and he I understand is greatly appreciated with the crisis ministries as a person involved or Shane, I think Shane Webb's involved also, but also uh, Irving Cares having a drive right now and they are appreciative for money because they can purchase it for less than we can. So we will make sure we support both great causes and uh, if you'd like Tracy to come back around, if you forgot that today, anything you put in the bucket will be given to these two great causes. So appreciate your contribution and donations for making a difference in lives that uh, are less fortunate than we are right now. Uh, I have a very gracious thank you card and I'm gonna pass that around for everyone to view. Uh, 
Um, at this time, would anyone like to give a flag update? I understand Robert had a tremendous accomplishment this week with his goal as president. So if anyone would like to come forward and give a brief update, that would be appreciated. Thank you, Madam President. A lot of you in the room already know this, but I made a commitment to um, Bob Bourgeois and Rick Lindsay and Bill Abar and all those that helped with flags. We were going to try to get a new location uh, that was somewhat uh, predicated based on the fact that the school district is buying the YMCA building. But um, uh, Rick Lindsay and I met with Dallas Burke from Decurd on Monday. They have generously donated a thousand square feet in their storage facility for us. They're actually walling it off. It's 30 foot tall. They're putting a 10 foot door in. They're going to insulate it and put an air conditioner in it. And uh, for those of you that have been slacking on your volunteering for flags because of the heat, we've eliminated that excuse for you. Um, we'll be picking up the flags from the old location when they go out in September on probably on the first for uh Labor Day, but they will be returned to the new location, uh, I think after Patriots Day, but a big uh, kudos to Rick Lindsay's on the screen there. So Mr. Lindsay, stand up, take a bow, appreciate yourself. Um, so uh, that's an exciting thing. I know our president's uh, committed to increase flags by 20%. That'll be easier to do in our new facility. We'll actually have room to store flags and work on flags. So um, thank you again for your commitment. Thanks to everyone working with flag. Bill Abar's got his hand up. You come to the mic so they can hear you. We have some loose poles and loose flags that we were gonna wait until after uh, September to put together, but because we're moving, it would probably be easier to move those if they were already constructed. There's not a lot of them, maybe about 40. Uh, so we're talking about an hour's work. I'm gonna get, some of the poles are bent. So I'm gonna get with Jim Klein and when Jim can do it, then we will set up an early Saturday, about an hour and we'll knock that out and clean that up. And then we can, um, instead of moving loose flags and loose poles, we can move built flags tied in bundles of five, okay? So that'll be in a uh, probably a couple of weeks. I'll, like I say, I'll get with Jim and when it, when because he's the uh, he's an Aggie engineer and he's the official pipe bender. He's the only guy that knows everybody's got a job and that's his job. So when he can do it, then we'll do it. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm sure everyone receives the monthly Rotary publication and um, the president uh, uh, has uh, helped us to remember that August is all about membership and all about growing our membership. And uh, we're very appreciative to Jordan because Jordan gets the word out daily and helps us to build awareness and we've even um, achieved a couple of new members because of his awareness on the social media. But uh, our director of membership is Lazaro and he's going to come up and help us to be mindful of people you work with, people you, uh oh, did it go off? Am I still on? It's not, thank you. No longer. So anyway, uh, just to build awareness, uh, next week we're all going to try to uh, bring a potential member and we're going to really focus on membership and trying to uh, celebrate with reaching our goal of 20% in growth. Sorry. I think you might be working now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, or Kind of. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we passed out a, a, a sheet of paper with a couple of suggestions um, about memberships uh, that members that you could potential members you could uh, invite from just your circle that you might know. And, and on it, there were a couple of different fields for, you know, people who might work in the medical field, people that might work in the city, things like that, that you might have acquainted. So let's not forget about that uh, spreadsheet that we passed out. And uh, if anybody meets another one, 
Uh, I'll have a couple more for next next meeting. Uh, that way you can take. But uh, it's as easy as again just inviting uh, somebody to come. Uh, earlier today, I, I invited two people. Uh, they're not here today, but one of them uh, is going to be here at the next one. They already asked me for uh, a membership application so that she can join next time that we have the meeting and that she attends. But a lot of times it's just that easy, just spreading the word and, and letting people know that we're here. Uh, and then it helps Jordan too with everything that he does as well, uh, because he is getting the word out there through social media. So you have the tools. So sometimes you can just go to the Irving, I'm sorry, the uh, Irving Las Pinas Rotary Club on Facebook and share that you come into Rotary or also share that what the videos that Jordan's uh, putting up about the memberships and why you join Rotary. Those are things that you can just spread with everybody on your social media and it's an easy way to bring them here but again don't forget about the spreadsheet that we passed out a couple of weeks ago fill that out and then it takes a couple of minutes every week again to just make an invite and then before you know we're going to have a, a full house it all takes one of us to bring one more person and then this room doubles right so let's see if we can do that uh and that's all i have for right now we're going to discuss more things on the uh board meeting today and we're going to share that with you guys next week as well but don't forget the, the spreadsheet that we passed out that way uh, you get some ideas and uh get some more people from the community here thank you you know what the other mic is here One. thank you so much so we're going to have some fun next week at our Thursday meeting that will uh, recognize uh, members that uh, have brought a guest. So we'll uh, decide on that at a board meeting, what we're going to highlight and make, bring another one, Laura, next week. <laughs> okay, we'll count it, bring another one. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to have fun with that and make sure everyone that... Uh, reaches out and tries to bring someone, will uh, recognize a return for their effort. How about that? Um, I've been notified by the country club that uh, August the 26th, we will need a different location. They have booked up here. However, um, the board is going to entertain possibly using that day for our membership social that would be later in the afternoon and we have availability. So um, with your sheet on the table, if you don't support having a membership social hour on August the 26th, instead of a noon meeting, please uh, put that down. Let us know to second Robert. I know we'll have to reach out to the superintendent and see if we can graciously accommodate him a different day because we can either do that since we had initially uh, recognized having uh, a social membership drive quarterly. Lacima Club has graciously um, accepted the invitation to accommodate us if that's a choice. So if uh, you are not wanting to um, use that day as a, a social hour for members. We can definitely uh, entertain La Cima Club supporting the noon meeting. So that's some things we'll discuss at the board meeting. However, your input, comment, so you can stay for it would be graciously appreciated. At this time, our pot, the president-elect Shane Webb will be introducing our guest speaker, which I'm looking forward to hearing about how we can support and help make a larger difference. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I love this. Man, I'm loud. Yeah, I got a big mouth. It's a preacher thing, right, Bill? Very good. Well, I'm excited uh, today that we have uh, two uh, wonderful guest speakers and, and potentially a third that you know we know and we tolerate. Um, but today we we are no stranger uh, to these uh, ladies who have both founded uh, wonderful nonprofits. Uh, they have spoken to this Rotary Club about those uh, nonprofits previously. 
So from All Things Made New, we have Michelle Flores, and she is the founder of that nonprofit. And so she's going to uh, bring us greetings and tell us uh, a little bit about that. Uh, and we also have our friend Sharon jo Johnson with us, uh, and we're excited that she's back with us uh, to talk about, there we go, uh, to talk about the nonprofit that uh, she has started, The Main Place. So we'll, we'll highlight them, but what they're really uh, talking about is something uh, exciting. Uh, they have a new coalition called The Alliance, um, and it's bringing together uh, their two organizations along with uh, Crisis Ministries uh, that Ruby leads, but uh, John will represent today. Um, so as, as we do this, I just, some food for thought, you know, I think this is a, a cool thing that's uh, long overdue for our community is having more and more connection and uh, work between our nonprofits um, so that we're stronger together. And, and the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, that three chords uh, wound together are much more difficult to break. So as we weave these three strands of nonprofits uh, together, they're, they're stronger uh, and they can work more efficiently and effectively to better our community. So I'm gonna shut up because uh, we have two intelligent and wonderful ladies uh, speaking to us today. Uh, we might even give John a, a chance to say a few words, but I'm gonna invite them forward now. And will you please give a warm welcome to Thank you. Thank you all for having us back and thank you for listening to us today about our Alliance collaboration. Um, I am Michelle Flores and this is Sharon Johnston. And um, the vision of the Alliance is to create a safe and a secure environment for individuals and families that share current circumstances and needs with the Alliance member organizations. Lead organizations develop individualized plans for effective and sustainable solutions to support healthy relationships and lifestyle choices within the home and community. So I'm gonna let Sharon talk about what the main place does and then we'll go into more of what our Alliance collaboration looks like. For those of you who don't know, the tagline for the main place is a retail store without a cash register. We just recently, post pandemic, opened our dressing rooms. Um, thank you note from yesterday. A 23 year old girl and her mother. And it was one of them was saying, I wasn't treated like a peasant. I was treated like royalty. The other said, I had no, I, I've never been treated this way. So, um, what the main place does. And let me tell you, pre-pandemic, because we've had to do different things post-pandemic, obviously. Um, with referrals and appointments, we serve everyone from conception to coffin. I started in 2006 with teenage high school students. God showed me, oh, they've got siblings. If they, if they were not youth, of unaccompanied youth, they were with some siblings, some family. So the, the siblings were in the same boat. And then it was, oh, well, so is the parent or parent. And in December of 2010, an elderly grandmother said, whispered to me at the gift distribution, that was the first gift distribution party for homeless teens uh, at Christmas time. This year will be the 12th. But the grandmother whispered, do you have sleeping bags here? And I said, yes, we do. Why do you ask? And she said, because I sleep on the floor. That caused us to realize we needed to serve everyone. The needs are very great. The needs are great. 
worldwide, nationwide, but I can tell you that Irving, Texas has a tremendous need. Post, post um, pandemic, we had to shut our um, dressing rooms because of, because of that. I posted that we would have, I don't take a long time, but I'll do it. I'll, I'll speed it up. I, I will try to speed it up. I have so many stories. I've done, I've done it so long and there's so much need. I'm, uh, and I ramble. That's why she's going to give the PowerPoint a presentation. She doesn't ramble because she can follow directions. So I can't. Okay. Um, I posted in March of 2020 on our website that the main place was ceasing all services until after the pandemic. That lasted 12 days. April 1, we were serving and we continued to serve. Uh, many nonprofits around the nation and in Irving ceased their operations and did not serve, but the, the need was so great. So crisis ministry, added days, added hours. All Things Made New has a reach that's nationwide. She didn't have it before the pandemic. The main place has served more people and, and all three of us have received more funds in 2020 than we ever have before. So God has blessed us because we obeyed. And I'm not saying that those people who did not serve weren't obeying. We were called to serve. I could talk all day, but I can't because she has to. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. <Sarah. laughs> like Sharon said, they do hygiene, clothing, um, all of the things that would go to these families. Crisis Ministry serves with financial assistance and a food pantry for road warriors and families in need with groceries. And all things we knew serve students in fifth through twelfth grade with character development, mentoring, life skills. Oh, did I lose you? Okay, um, life skills and many other different programs just to help them to be successful and to know that they are loved and wanted, so that they're not affected by the peer pressures, suicide, um, drugs, and gangs that they're being faced with on a regular basis. So the reason that we came together, the purpose of the collaboration, um, we came together because we are like-minded. Um, we realized that we were serving the same families and that we wanted to be able to provide wraparound services for these families without them having to go door to door, repeating their stories time and time again. If anyone knows anything about trauma-informed care, those individuals that have to go and repeat their stories time and again, it just adds to their trauma and it can cause guilt, shame, embarrassment, or reluctancy to receive the services and the needs that they're looking for to be able to be sustainable and successful, to change their patterns, to change their household, to be um, whole again. So crisis ministry is all things made new and the main place came together to be able to provide that. Also to be able to be able to provide targeted resources and referrals. What that looks like is um, an example that I'll share later, but where we're doing the work on behalf of our families. We're not sending them with a list of call all these different places and see what it looks like and see if they can get you in or what their programs look like right now or their resources and things of that nature. Um, we're able to provide those direct resources for the things that they're needing through the needs assessments that we're able to use with our families when we do our intake and um, have them in our programs. And then also a single point case management. So crisis ministries, all things we knew in the main place have a, we use pieces connect to be able to provide those case management documentation notes so that when a story is done to one of our case managers, all things we knew, um, crisis ministers can see what's happening, what is the, what's behind the story or what they're hearing so that they can really paint that true picture of the things that are happening with our families. Um, next slide, please. The Alliance is the formal collaboration. And so the, the purpose of this, like you'll see on your sheet, is um, sharing information and resources. We are three small lean teams, um, but we are mighty in what we do and we are committed to the missions that we are serving. And so together we are stronger, like Shane had mentioned, um, to work on that development piece. Um, instead of all three of us going out and having different drives or different fundraisers, we can do one and we can do it stronger because our teams, like I said, are lean, but we can get volunteers together and people can be excited about supporting multiple organizations 
that impact these same families that are going through multiple doors. Um, also with outreach, um, one of the things that our community might not know exists are some of our organizations. But if we can have that outreach component to let people know the services and the resources that are available, then they're able to meet that need and connect with us um, so that we can bridge that, need, that gap. And then the collaborative case management, like I mentioned. So together we are better, stronger, more efficient, and therefore more effective with those that we serve. And we do have a strategy, um, like I mentioned about our database for case management. Um, one of our big strategies that we are hopeful for in the coming future is one central location. Instead of having to go to different um, locations around town to pick up different services, the main place and all things we knew are fortunate to be on the same campus, but we are renters of our uh, locations. And so when our lease ends, we want to also be able to stay together to be able to serve these families um, where they can come into one location and get all of those service needs that they're um, wanting and needing. Um, connecting through outreach and community events, the trauma-informed care. And then one really great piece that we've been able to add to our collaboration is our young professionals, um, which is really an awesome way for us to have those allies of 20s and 30-year-olds that want to serve, that want to be connected, that are looking for mission-minded causes that they can get involved with. And then they can also help to spread that awareness of what we're doing and how they can um, help champion the programs and the projects that are being done for those that we serve. Um, and then we do want to expand our collaboration to other complementary services with like-minded organizations that can help to continue providing a stronger wraparound service um, outlook. So some of the accomplishments that we've had is like I mentioned, our young professionals group. Um, we had a collaborative volunteer appreciation lunch in this room where we were able to bring all of our volunteers together from um, two of our three organizations and it allowed our volunteers to see that they're a part of something bigger. They're a part of something that really has a huge ripple effect in the community. And so it just creates such an amazing synergy for everyone to get behind and get involved in. Um, we're working together to support those families and then the shared database for our case management. Um, and then I have a story. This is kind of how this whole collaboration came together. So we had a family at All Things May New. Like I mentioned, we serve students in fifth through 12th grades. And we had a we had a girl in our program. She was a student at the middle school down the street, um, lived in the apartment complex next to us, and was coming for mentoring, hot meal, um, tutoring, things like that. Through her mentoring conversation, she was telling her mentor that her lights had been turned off. They were hungry. They didn't have food. You know, she would get a hot meal from us. So we were able to work on the back end, call Crisis Ministries. Um, hey, we have this family. This is the need that they're having. They're short on rent, um, like they're paying their rent. And so that's why their electricity was turned off. Well, within 30 minutes, crisis ministries had their lights back on. Um, the next day there was a box of food at their door. Um, through that conversation, we were able to go into their house and see what they had and that they were sleeping on floors, like what Sharon had mentioned, the different families sleeping on floors. Um, we were able to go to the main place and refer them there on our behalf, instead of making them do all of the work, um, they were able to go and mom just cried. Mom has, was disabled. Dad was working cleaning churches at night, trying to make it by. And just the dignity that they were able to receive that now they think, wow, someone believed in me and they cared enough to stop and listen to my story and not to just put a label on me, not to just throw me out and say, oh, well, too bad. You better go get another job and figure it out because the mom was disabled, because the daughter was taking care of the younger son, because of these conversations that we're able to have with these families, we're able to work on their behalf and for them and not put a label on them, not um, disregard what they're saying, but be able to come together as a team to provide that service and that connection. And so that's just one of many stories that we've been able to be a part of that we're so thankful for because it's not about us, but it's about those that we serve. And if we can serve them well and we can do well for them, then they're the ones that get to go out there and be the hand up to, for someone else and get to pull another family up and, or connect another family that has that same need that we can be their advocates for as well. And then lastly, how you can support us. Sharon, will you come back up and share about our golf tournament? Um, but when we have our capital campaign and we get this building, we would love to be able to have you guys as supporters, um, whether that be through advocacy, through financial contributions or anything of that word, help spread the word about what we're doing and our different member organizations, participate in our golf tournament like Sharon will talk about, 
And then also, if you know of any 20s or 30 year olds that are looking to get involved in the young professionals for networking and mission minded volunteering, um, we would love to be able to connect those people to our young professional team as well. Jeff said there was this. I'm not wanting that one. I wanted the one that has the uh, sponsorship levels. Be your Vanna. Oh, okay. That's what I just need. I need okay, this. Great. Okay. So I need to tell you that all three of us have never spent more than $25 each on a fundraiser. We just haven't. We do grants. We talk to people. We tell them the truth. We tell them what we do and we do what we say we're going to do and have been doing. Michelle has a, a story that uh, I'm gonna just tell you really, really quickly. She was a eight years teacher. Eight years, she was a kindergarten teacher. Stop it. And she saw the angst as those kindergarten kids got in the fifth grade about going into middle school. She felt led to resign and start a nonprofit that would teach them character development, how to dream, and on and on and on, everything that they were missing from everywhere they went and from everywhere, everyone else. So she had to sell her home and her wedding ring in order to do that. She has an awesome husband that's on her board and active and so forth. So we have the same hearts. We don't pat ourselves on the back for serving because the Bible says everyone needs to serve. We need to prefer others over ourselves. So being like-minded like that changes everything. We don't have plastic people that volunteer with us because people in pain can knock off sickiness and they don't need any more harm. So we're not doing anything that we haven't done. We just formalized it. I can't stand knowing something and not telling it to somebody, whether it's somebody in the grocery store. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to tell my information. I share resources. We all do. She's given tours at the main place because she knows so much about it and cares. It's awesome. I can give tours to hers too. I don't usually, usually, she's usually available. So, okay. So this is going to be our first ever. It is our first ever fundraising event that costs more than $25. All right. So it is a golf tournament. It's called the Alliance Open and it is to benefit each of our three nonprofits. Now, we, as co-founders, it's our babies. We are not saying, well, we'll just put them aside and do the alliance because the alliance is not for that. So we are supporting our own. And once we get this off the ground, well, we'll be able to go right back to the same amount of time that we were spending with our own. So we have sponsorships that um, range from 25,000, except that one was sold. Um, on the first day we, on the first day that we that we were talking about, we need to we need to get started selling these. So between the three of us, we brought in twenty five thousand, five thousand, and twenty five hundred the first day of, of sales. So we are getting support, but we need more support. Uh, there are there's a platinum sponsor at twelve fifty. There's a whole bunch of what is it perks. Perks, go with it. Who's a golfer? John, aren't you a golfer? No? Yes? Well, what do you call it? Is it a perk? Benefit incentive. It, it, it's, you get free stuff if you pay a bunch of money. That's what it is. How about that? Okay, it's the benefit of the sponsorship. Now, think about this. There's three of us. So 
So anytime that you support the Alliance, you are supporting all three of us. You're getting three for the price of one. So that's very, very important to keep in mind because we each have our donor base, our volunteer base, our, and our support, all three of us do. We don't share donor information with each other, okay? Other people have not joined us because they said, oh, all they want is to get our donor list. Well, we, we're not sharing it with each other. We're not, it's, that's that. So the people that we get new, we'll share. But the people we already work really hard to get is ours. So, okay. Uh, gold sponsor, 10,000. Sil silver sponsor, 7,500. And then it's 5,000, 25, and 12. Uh, let's see, a couple of 25s and 1,000. And then a whole sponsor is $500. So that's what we need. We need golfers. We know nothing about golf, but we have a, a woman who, who is the chair of this that uh, has led successful golf tournaments. I still call the thing sticks instead of what they are, putters and drivers and all that. Clubs, clubs. Yeah, I call them sticks. Uh, but you don't have to... You don't have to know anything about this because other people do. And we got a grant for a golf um, website. Thank you. Who's speaking for me? Jeff? Yay, thank you. Thank you. I need help all the time. So, and if you, if you just want to write a check that's um, lower than 500, we will be glad to take that. I can take it today. We have things at your table to fill out. Um, we will use social media from all three nonprofits to boost your business or just your name. And we appreciate the opportunity to speak here. And John has to speak. He doesn't want to speak. He doesn't want to speak. Okay, that's fine. Thank you so much. Thank you so very, very much. And now Mr. Richard Raymond will lead us in the four-way test. Thank you everyone and the board meeting will follow.